Hello, Jim Hodges here, Dash here. Dash is an eight and a half month old terrier mix that came in for our residency training program. Really good boy, really smart, uh, happy, affectionate, prey driven, much like the terrier breed is. Uh, wants to go after squirrels, butterflies, you name it. He's really attracted to them. That's okay, we just have to work with that. We have to work to get his attention or focus on us. He uh, is also very dominant in nature. He wants to lead. As he gets older, he would try to be the leader of the pack. That doesn't necessarily mean bad things, but sometimes with a dominant dog, that can be a little more assertive. That should be no problem with him as long as we step up and do the things that we need to do. So I'm getting ready to go through obedience with him. Uh, we've got some squirrels out today and butterflies you'll see in the picture. If he does something wrong, I'm going to address it. I'm going to ask him to do it. If he does it right, I'm going to praise. I've uh, told you before in, in many instances on these videos and with my client here, it's all about motivation. And motivation takes two forms. One is praise. The other is consequence. Praise is words, touch, treat, toy, and positive emotion. We want to combine as many of those things as we can in the moment of him performing as we can. We want to bridge our words into actions so that our, act, our words will later simulate or, or go back to those actions in the future. On the flip side, if he does something wrong, we're gonna, we're gonna bite him or provide a consequence. That's typically a tap of the leash, just like that, followed with a little mild praise when he does what we ask, and I'll usually say no. So it's words and touch. Sometimes it's avoidance and separation, but most of the time, it's words in touch with the tap of the leash, tap on the side, and the word no with it, okay? We are devoid of emotion, at least negative emotion on the consequence. We don't want to intimidate or dominate him. You ready to work, man? Good boy. Yes, sir. Let's go. So our let's go is our walking command. Come on, buddy. Notice I encourage him to come up with me. Uh, if a dog is lacking behind, lagging behind a little bit, I'll encourage him. I'll not provide a consequence to get him up beside me unless they're willfully being behind, okay? So he's got a little shorter legs. I tend to walk a little faster. I'm gonna encourage him. Let's go. That a boy. Now, if he was in front of me or he started pulling the leash, I would tap the leash, just like this, to my side. So, tap, tap, just like that. Good boy, it's okay. Uh, and I would tap it to my side to bring him to my side. So if I'm walking and I tap the leash, it would be, no, let's go. Good boy, let's go. Yeah. Good, hand signal for sit is to sit. When I ask him to sit, good boy, uh, I'm gonna have him sit. If he didn't sit, or if he popped up from the sit, I would tap the leash straight up above his head and tell him no, sit. And then I would come back and praise again a little bit afterwards, not as much as if he did it right the first time. Uh, sit means sit, okay? I'm not gonna keep him in a stay, but he needs to hold that sit until I release him. And when I release him, I can go to any command I want or the break command. If I go to the break command, that's a release. And when I break, I'm going to step away from him. I've just picked up a treat in my hand, and I'm going to bring the treat here between my legs. And what I'm trying to encourage him to do is to come to me when I release him. I'm subliminally trying to teach him that I'm the center of the universe, and I'm doing the ground leg, the first leg for the come command, on leash and off leash. Great. That a boy, good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy. So I praised him. Now, later in life, if he's off leash and he's standing out there and I have a treat, he's in the yard or in another room of the house, I'll do something like this. Dad, hey, what you got? Come. And when he commits to coming to me, I'm going to tell him to come. I'm going to reward him, praise him, tell him how good he is on the back end of it. And that's how we start the recall or the come command. We have to do that hundreds of times. We never tell him to come unless he's committed to coming. That's why I'm going to show him that treat or toy or what have you to get his attention first. Once I get his attention and he decides he wants to come, keep in mind he's off leash, and he commits to coming to me and I know he's coming, that's when I give it, Mary that word, come with his happy feelings. Let's go. Sit. Hand signal for D-O-W-N from the front, down. You notice he was downing already. Down means down. Now, if he didn't down just then, or if he popped up from down after I put him in, 
here's his head. I would go, no, down, just like that. Little tap. We're not, again, trying to intimidate or dominate. We're trying to guide and direct, okay? And once he does it, if he popped out of it or didn't do it, we give him a little bit of praise to let him know he's doing good. Down by itself, he can't smell the ground. Now, if I told him to stay, now he's going to pack his bags there for a while. He can smell the ground. He can chew a bone. He can do something like that. Go to sleep. I don't care. We basically have told him he's going to be there for a while. He doesn't have to pay attention. But when I do sit and down, in general, he has to stay, but we're not putting the term stay in it because stay in my book means we're going to be there for a long while. When we typically tell him to sit or down, it means to sit or down and sit or down and hold it till I give you the next command. Right. Good boy. That's a good boy. <laughs> sit. Good. Right. Right here. Atta boy. Sit. Now from the side. Down. Good boy. He down. I could pet him. I could love him. I could give him a little treat. I could do whatever I wanted to do. Now, and he's holding that down until I release it. Just remember the difference now. I didn't say S-T-A-Y, but he's holding that until. Okay, sit. Good boy. That's one of the hardest commands for a dog to learn is to sit from down after they've had so much work to get to the down. I typically do it right up front because the dog's ready to pop up, and I'll usually reward him with a treat. So I've given him treats. If you've noticed when I've given him a treat, hey, buddy, right. My hand's in the open palm. Good boy. I give him the treat, pet him, and love him. I typically do not give a treat like this because then it tends to get a dog to be biting at the uh, tree. I want him to take it nicely out. Sit. Good. So we did the COME off leash because we were talking about the break. On leash, we're going to do it as well. On leash, he has to come to us and sit. So watch my hand signal. <coughs> he comes, he sits. Add a boy. And he has to hold that until I release him, okay? Or I can give him the treat now, or I can release him and give it to him. I'm going to give him the treat. He still has to hold the sit. Great. Let's go. Hope that makes sense. I could have uh, released him and given him the treat just as well. Mixing up these commands is great for our dog, because it teaches our dog to focus and pay attention. We do the same thing in the same order each and every time. Before long, because dogs are such conditioned animals, they can just mail it in. They know what we're going to do. They're just going to do it. They can still focus on the, the squirrels and the butterflies and what have you. He's going to see these things, and that's okay. But he still has to listen to us and not pull on the leash. Let's go. Good boy, come on. All right, next one. Come on. Ah, boy. Come on. Good boy. No treats in. If I wanted to give him a treat, I could. My owners love the treat. This is the time to give a treat when our dog performs. We try to give him the treat or we provide the consequence in the moment of what we're trying to teach. So he's on the place. He can lay down, sit down, stand up. I don't care what he does. He just needs to be comfortable there. He can do that for a couple of hours at a time. Versus the down stay, he might could, but the down stay, I normally put a dog in it for about 30 to 45 minutes. This is easily a couple of hours. It's a, a great tool for when uh, you want to relax, but you want to be the leader at the same time or keep him out of your hair at night. You ready, buddy? Let's go. Good boy. I'm proud of you. So the next command would be the heel command. Sit. I like to tell people with the heel, we have a box beside us. Good boy. It's his job to stay in the box. It's our job to keep him in the box. Heel is a movement command. So I would tell him to heal, and I would start walking. And you notice I'm praising him. One of the things that we want to do with this guy is make sure he watches us. And I use treats to help get his focus to begin with, and it's done real well. So anytime he looks at me, I'm going to praise. Back to the heel. He's in this box. Whenever I start to move, I tell him to heal. When I stop, he stays in the box and he sits. It's my job to help him stay in that box. So if I start to turn and make changes in direction, I've got to allow him a chance to get back in the box before I stop. You ready? Heel. So we're going to walk forward. I stop. Good boy. Took him a little bit of a second, but that's okay. He was thinking about it. Heel. So I turn. Watch what happens when I step off. He comes right back into the box. 
and then I straighten back up. Good boy. And I can down right out of the hill. Frank. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. Sit. Good. Heel. Stop. Good. I use this in crowded areas from time to time. The let's go is just as good. We're just regulating with the leash. Going back to the leash real quick, I forgot to say something in the beginning. It's important that we have a loose leash. We don't want it tight. When it's tight again, we're directing him and guiding him. I want him used to wanting and paying attention to stay with us on a loose leash. That's the only way we get to a point that uh, he'll obey off leash over the long term. Let's go. Good boy. Uh, the next thing is to load up in the car or something like that. Come on, buddy. Come on, load up. Adam. Adam, boy. Good boy. Good friend. I thought he was going to jump off of it. Our stump needs a little bit of work there, but he did it real good. We load him up. Load up is to get on furniture. To get off, we can tell him off, we can tell him break, or we can tell him another command. So basically, that's it. The big thing with the dominant dog is we want to work them. We can work them a minute a day, 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, 10, 15 minutes. But it's important to work. And when it's time to work, we want to make sure it's a positive thing, okay? We praise 20 times more during our sessions or during the day than we bite, okay? We want him to be encouraged to do what we ask him to do. We want to use our voice and our emotion and our enthusiasm to increase that bond with him so he'll be your buddy for life. You know, if you ever have a question, you pick up the phone and call me. It's 336-945-3232. I'm sales at Jim Hodges Dog Training and on Facebook, Jim Hodges Dog Training. I appreciate it so much. If you need me, call me and uh, God bless.